My Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And his bub, William Frawley. Away from the stove. What are we having? Wait and see. Of course I think we're right, but a lot of people won't agree with us. Time's up, lover boy. I gotta get on that thing. Well, it'll just be up to us to show them they're wrong. Dinner's ready, and Buff you know, said they come and get it! Same way about something as important as this is. Now, there's nothing to be nervous about tomorrow. A guy could be dying, and you'd stay right on playing footsie with Gene. I got an application blank the other day. Now, we can look it over. Didn't you hear, Chip? Dinner's ready. Now, go wash up. Look, just because Dad's out of town doesn't mean you can boss me around. Now, come on, Smooch, go by and give me that for one Mike. of the kiddies, Gene. Mike, come on, I got to get on, out Come on, you this. guys, cut out this nonsense. Well, I... Get up. Look, my thing. Well, this guy's on the I haven't got a chance. Oh, boy, this will stand a senior class on their ear, won't it? I'll stand you on your ear if you don't get in there. Now! All right. Well, look, Miss Benson... Couldn't you just read my theme to the ladies in your club without showing them my clock collection? Come on, I'll be back. About noon tomorrow. And if he gets delayed, he'll call us up. I don't see how he expects to get through when Robbie keeps that phone busy day and night with his yakking. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm not trying to back out. It's just that bringing all those clocks to the women's club is... Okay, Miss Benson. Sure. Four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Bye. Oh, boy. Robbie, fish head. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> Sit down, Robbie. Well, that phone's giving you a cauliflower ear. Look who's talking. Hey, that's cheating. Well, at least Gene and I have important things to talk about. Oh, sure, very important stuff, like... Oh, sweetie, bitty, sweetie, is you and I, sweetie, bitty, sweetie, Mikey, baby. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a smart aleck child. I'm a patient man most of the time, bub, but this juvenile... Hey, that's my arrow. Now that you're a man, when are you gonna move out and get married so I can have your room? Well, I'll tell you one thing, when I do move out and get married, you won't be there. Bob? Yeah? Suppose the guy was in a spot where he, where he had to pretend he was something he wasn't or had something he didn't have. Like a, unusual clocks or something. And You're not getting those glasses clean. And then somebody, like his teacher, said, uh, We'd like to see this collection of things you have at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Of course, I... Or this guy hasn't got them. You're splashing water on my clean floor. Robbie, mm -hmm. where are you going to get yourself a bunch of unusual clocks by 4 o'clock tomorrow? Well... <laughs> I just thought you'd like to read this. High school elopements on upswing throughout state. <laughs> Educator tells teenage marriage problems. Did you ever notice it's always some guy about 90 who tells us how we think? Oh, sure, always. We're not supposed to know anything at our age because we're children. Say, do you think it'll be crowded at the license bureau? Nah, it's bound to be. They dish out more marriage licenses on Saturday than any other day of the week. Hi, Gene. You finished with the hose, Mike? Yeah, you can have it. What are you kids doing, reading the funnies? You see, we're children. We must be reading the funnies. Save them for me, will you? I've been looking for them all day. <laughs> Dr. Harrison Forbes said today that one reason for this teenage problem is that licenses are too easy to get, and young couples rush... You know he's got a point there? They're too darned easy. 
Huh? Anybody with a car can get a license nowadays. No wonder traffic is in such a mess. I have a dress to press and everything. I want to look my best. You're going to be the prettiest girl there. See you in about an hour. Okay. Where is everybody, Jeff? Robbie's in the attic looking for old clocks. Mike and Gene went someplace, and boy, was he dressed up. He had his hat on and everything. Gene, too. Can I have a banana? Well, it's a little late to say no, isn't it? I asked him where they were going, and he said, get lost. Then well, Gene figures. said, are you sure the license bureau is open all day? Then Mike said, sure, I phoned the city hall this morning. License bureau? They were reading about that in the paper. So that's where they went, huh? Where? Where you said, down to get a new driver's license. Who's getting a driver's license? My Gene and him went down to the city hall. Are you kidding? You don't get a driver's license at the city hall. That's at the motor vehicle department. Bob, listen. A couple weeks ago, Miss Benson assigned this theme on her hobbies. You heard him say city hall, Chip? It looked like they're going on a trip to me. Gene has... Aw, oh, Chip, they can't go away on a trip. Not just the two of them. Why can't they? Mike's got a car. Why can't they go on a trip? Well, they... They just can't, that's all. Why can't they? They have to be back by tonight. Oh, that's right, sure. I almost forgot. It's Mike's turn to do the dishes tonight. It's not. Oh, bub. Anyhow, like I was telling you, she assigned this theme, but she doesn't want me to write about my motor again. That's funny Mike didn't at least leave word for his father. I don't have any other hobbies to write about, so I had to make one up. She flipped, gave me an A-, minus, and now she wants me to... Chip, bring me that paper out in the living room, will you? Boy, nobody in this house cares what happens to me. That's not so. I think it's swell that you got an A minus. Yeah, where am I going to find a dozen unusual clocks? What makes you think that Gene and Mike were going on a trip? Well, Gene was carrying this little sort of a... What do you mean, a suitcase? I guess so. Mike even carried it out to the car for it. Well, I'm going over to Freddie Trotter's house and help him feed his cotter snake. Let me know if Dad brings me something. Holy smoke! myself to blame and I thought maybe I could figure a way out. Just aren't that many unusual clocks around. Oh, hi, buddy. Most of the clocks I wrote about in my essays are real old. Hi, Dad. I mean like three or four hundred years. Uh -huh. I, I read about them in the encyclopedia. Well, Steve, I thought you'd never get here. Oh, hi, Bob, will you let me tell him? Uh, Rob, Dad, what are you so excited about? He got well, an A minus. An A minus. Now, go ahead, Bob. Robbie. I want to have a serious talk with your father. Go ahead. Well, can I have your watch anyway? My watch? Yeah, you said someday you were going to give it to me, and today's when I need it. Ow! Well, can I at least have the egg timer? Yes, but bring it back. Egg timer? <laughs> Steve, I want to have a talk with you. Okay, Bob, right after I take a hot shower, huh? But you can't take a shower now. Now, don't tell me that water heater's gone out again. No, but... Well, anything else can wait, Bob. I want to get out of these clothes. I've had them on since yesterday morning. Where are the other boys? They're around. Chip's down the street. Mike's eloping with Gene. And you know, same old Saturday routine. <laughs> Mike's doing what? I don't see why a bunch of ladies would want to look at my old cowboy wristwatch. Hey, remember this? Aunt Mate sent it to us one Christmas. Hey, there's no cuckoo. I traded to Freddy for that stuffed fish. Well, you go get it back and hurry up. You couldn't use the fish, could you? I gotta have that cuckoo. I'll try, but I think Freddy's catty. Mike even wore his hat. Oh? Now add that up, and where do you think they went? Bowling? Oh, Mom. Mike and Jean know that we all approve of their getting married when they get old enough. They don't have to elope. They know that. 
So you don't think we have anything to worry about? No, of course not. They're both too sensible to do a thing like that. Mm -hmm. When they get back this afternoon, you'll probably find out they went to a movie or something. Well, they must have picked out at least a double feature then, because Jean took a suitcase full of clothes with her. <laughs> if it'll make you feel any better, Bob, we'll go next door and ask Jean's folks where the kids are. Spend the night over there? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think we don't have anything to worry about. And all this so-called evidence is why the old private eye here thought that uh, Mike and Jean had eloped. <laughs> Guess Jean's trying to save us the cost of a wedding. Yeah. Oh, well, they were reading about high school marriages in the paper here, and when Jean took her suitcase, I figured... Bob, I told you that Jean was probably returning some dresses she borrowed from Gloria. Well, what I'd like to find out is why Mike wore his hat. Well, just for you, Bob, I'll check in Jean's room and see if Gloria's dresses are gone. For my money, Bob, I think you put together a pretty good case. Thanks. It's so easy to jump to conclusions, Bob. Pardon me. But we don't have to worry about Mike or Jean. They know exactly where they're going. But I don't know exactly where I'm going. I guess I came in another door the other day. Marriage license bureau? Oh, yeah. Right down the hall, around the corner. You'll see the light. Well, thanks. Well, here we go. I wonder how he knew where he wanted to go. I don't know. Oh, hey, you better give me the application blank so we can be ready when... Oh, honey, I forgot it. I left it home. What do we do? Well, we'll get another one, that's all. There's nothing to worry about. No problem. No problem? I thought I was telling Bob. These are sensible kids. They're not going to get married until Mike's out of college. Or at least until he's in college. Florence, what's the matter? I found this on Jean's dressing table. Application for a marriage license. <laughs> okay, I'll take real good care of it, Miss Fitz. Thanks a lot. I'll be right over. You got my kugel? It's all Freddie could find. <laughs> I don't, I don't see him, do you? No. Oh. Now, there you see. You fooled around so long, we probably missed him. He didn't have enough money with him to get very far. Oh, no, Henry. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go and ask the clerk if he's seen him. All right. I didn't even give Gina allowance for the week. Of course, I, I guess they could borrow some. Who'd lend money to a teenager? Another teenager. <laughs> They've probably been here and gone long ago. Let's phone Flo and see if she's heard anything. Uh, you call her. I'll wait here for Steve. All right. Would, would you pardon me just a minute? Oh. Just take a second. I You'll have to wait your turn, sir, at the end of the line, like everybody well, else. Well, I, I don't want a license. I just wanted to ask a question. This is the Marriage License Bureau. The information desk is in the lobby. But I don't think they'd be able to help. Uh, this is rather urgent. urgent. Look, mister, nobody's any urgenter than we are. We only have an eight-hour pass. It's taken me three hours to talk her into marrying me. <laughs> okay, now, if you'll just sign there, please. Shall we? Wasn't Judge McHugh wonderful? Now you can see why so many kids our age get married by him. No, no, Bub, nobody's called. Oh, uh, just a minute, Bub. Somebody's at the door. Maybe it's news. Robbie, have you heard anything from Mike? Uh, no, ma'am. 
I just wondered if you had any old clocks around that you weren't using. Old oh, clocks? Uh, yeah, I have to get about a dozen of these together by four. Oh, I'm sorry, Robbie. I can't talk about clocks right now. Come in. No, no news. It was Robbie's on some kind of a trash drive. Oh, no, no, I won't say anything. Well, uh, you'll call me the minute you know. Bye. Bye. Robbie, did Mike seem well, strange to you this morning? Uh, no more than usual. I suppose a clock like this costs a lot of money, huh? Oh, no, it's just a copy. She seemed perfectly normal. Well, do you suppose that if I took real good care of it that I could borrow it for this afternoon? Oh, oh, yes, Robbie, you can take it. Thanks, Mrs. Pearson. <laughs> I've never seen a watch like that. Oh, it's an heirloom. My mother gave it to me on my wedding day. I was going to give it to Jean. Well, I wonder if... Oh, dear. Oh, that's okay, Mrs. Person. I'll just take this. I wouldn't want to borrow anything that meant so much to you. But thanks again, Mrs. Pearson. Excuse me, which one of you is Princess Margaret? Very funny. You can't get a license unless you have a girl with you, mister. You guys ought to know that. Yes, we know that. We happen to be here to stop a marriage, not start one. Stop a marriage? What are you, against love or something? Me, I'm beginning to feel a little silly. What's the matter, mister? Don't you believe in marriage? Yes, marriage is fine. It's pretty darn expensive. It's just that our children are a little young. They're not even 18, and... 18? What do you mean, that's not too young? I was married twice before I was 18. Three times. Oh, hi, Eddie. <laughs> oh, Steve, come on. Hurry up. Come on, he's found him. I'll bet the whole thing's a tempest in the teapot. Well, that's what I've been telling you, Henry. Come on, I tracked them down. Good. Where are they? I don't know, but I know where they went. Come on, the guard will tell you. Then in about 20 minutes, they come back. They had their papers and all. They asked me to show them where Judge McHugh's office is. They went to the judge's office. I took them right to the judge's door. Yes, sir. Pretty near the last couple he married, I guess. Oh, thank you. Well, I guess that's it. It sure is. I think I'll just go and sit down for a few minutes. <laughs> I think so. I'm kind of anxious to tell him. You know, get his reaction and everything. I wonder what he'll think. What's the matter with you two guys? You haven't said three words all the way home. 17-year-old bride, 1939 jalopy, and no job. I just don't understand it. Mike and I have always been so close. Well, there are a couple of real swell kids. With no place to live, no food, and no money. We've always been, well, like good friends. I wish a good friend had told you he was going to run off with my daughter. Boy, that's some cuckoo. Sure hope Freddy's mother doesn't belong to the club that you're showing these to. Why? Because we borrowed the cuckoo from one of her hats. Oh, boy. When we turn this in on Monday, if Mr. Clark doesn't give us an A in sociology, I'm going to sue. Well, you know how he loves the students to do research. Well, it was worth it. Gee, these figures that Judge McHugh gave us. Just think of it. 82% of all high school marriages last year. Bluey! Well, I love Jean like a daughter. She knows that. You know how fond Flo and I are of Mike. 
I'll help them all I can. The only problem is they're both so young. Well, all right, so they get an early start. Of course, I'm not made of money, but I could finance them for a while. <laughs> a little while. I had a daughter once. She was only 19. She married a big jughead named Douglas. <laughs> yeah, and you fought it every step of the way. I'll say I did. Having babies nowadays is pretty expensive. One right after the other. I was 21 years old and I had a job. Don't forget that. Mm-hmm. Mike's probably smarter at 18 than you were at 21. My life savings are gone. I suppose I can get a loan. I still have my job. We better start cleaning up. Oh, let's not lose this. Now, when Mr. Clark hears how we went through the whole bit at the marriage license bureau just to get background for this project, he will flip. Well, Henry, we might as well face it. We're in-laws. <laughs> By pooling our resources, Steve, we might just make it. Good. Let's get out of here, huh? <laughs> Oh, how I hate to break this to Florence. She's gonna have to know sooner or later, Henry. Yeah, I'd rather it would be later. Florence, come in and have a cup of coffee. Good idea. Anyway, I never know what to do when she starts to cry. I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you call her? It might be easier to tell her over the phone. <laughs> I'll get the coffee going. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but wait till we hear from the honeymooners. Not gonna be easy on Florence. I think I'll just sit down here for a minute. I'll get the phone for you, Henry. Well, marriage or no marriage, I'm gonna get that hot shower and get out of these clothes. Want me to dial for you? I know it's silly to ask at a time like this, Bob, but I've got any clean shirts upstairs. There's a drawer full of them up there that I ironed last night. Hi, Dad. Welcome home. Hi, we saw you pulling the driveway. Mike, what are you two doing here? Working on our sociology project. Sociology? Yeah, come on in and see it. <laughs> the case against teenage marriages? It's against it? <laughs> yeah, we've been studying it in class. Boy, have we worked on this project. We've been down to City Hall, talked to a judge and everything. Uh, uh, no, dear, we haven't found them yet. But, but Florence, but, but, Florence, I know she's your only daughter, dear. But she's mine, too. We stood in line and went through the whole bit. And there it is. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> Refused, eh? Right. So it isn't true what the newspapers say, that just anyone can get a marriage license. Think of the money we've saved this way. A wedding like that would cost $2,000. I think we proved a lot of things with this project, don't you, Dad? Yes, you have. You proved a lot of things. <laughs> this is real college-level thinking, Mike. I'm proud of both of you. I wish you'd remind me to show Chip the difference between a briefcase and a suitcase. <laughs> and I'd still like to find out what... Uh, never mind. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I think I'll go up and lie down. I'm a little tired. It must be from all the jumping I've been doing today. Jumping? Yes, uh, to conclusions. <laughs> Aren't you a little tired, too? Well, come to think of it, I am. <laughs> Robbie, where are you going? Don't worry, Dad. Sooner or later, a man's got to stand on his own. Hey, Robbie! Thanks. Hi, Dad. Hi, sir. Well, so long. Can't keep the ladies waiting. <laughs> On his own. Steve. <laughs> but, but, Clarence, if we buy them a new car, Jeff. we haven't saved the money. Jeff. Clarence, you know I can't stand to hear a woman cry. <laughs>
Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And his bub, William Frawley. Away from the stove. What do we have? Wait and see. Well, that's what we always have. Then why do you keep asking? Because you said a quitter never wins. I think I heard your dad drive in with a car, and I'll go and dredge up Mike and Robbie. Hands off. <laughs> what are we having? Bob's afraid to tell us. You know, I, I can't figure out what happened to your dad. Want me to go see? I want you to sit down there and keep those hands clean. Robbie here, you chip? Granted. Well, that was friendly. Hey, Robbie! All right, I'm coming. That wasn't Steve's car I heard. I must have been hearing things. Hi. Hi, Bob. Hi, Chip. Mike. Yeah. Hey, Steve. What took you so long? What took me so long? Have you ever heard of a man being trapped in his own garage? In our garage? I never go in there without emergency rations. Yeah. <laughs> what are you fellas trying to do? Air condition the kitchen? 
Well, I've never seen it like it was tonight. What have you fellas been doing in there, anyway? We were playing Army. Well, play Army some other place, will you? It must have taken me a half hour to clean it up so I could get my car in. Mike, did you park your car over my side partner or something? I don't think so. Here, let me help you. Hey. No, Robbie's motor takes up quite a bit of room. Well, he builds a car around it. <laughs> Hands off, Dad. Hmm? Keep your nose out of there. Okay. Hi, Dad. Well, hi, Rob. And you stay out of there, too. We thought you were waiting for an engraved invitation. Did you make the basketball team? I don't have time for basketball. That's not what you said this morning. Well, we've got to do something about that garage. It would help if Chip and Robbie get some of their junk out of the way. Say, it looks like I may land a part-time job. Oh. Well, I don't have much stuff in the garage. No, it's those cars that take up all the room. All right, now you guys were so anxious to know what we're having. It's... Stew. <laughs> Mulligan stew. What kind of a job is it, Mike? A salesman at the Ellis Sporting Goods store. Sure. Who's the salesman over there? Well, I got a chance to be. Hey, no kidding. Can you get me a special deal on baseball cards? Well, I can try. If you don't have time for basketball, why'd you try out today? For laughs. Anyway, I figured one big basketball star in the family's enough. What's that supposed to mean? It means Robbie didn't make the team. I uh, drew up some plans for storage shelves in the garage. I wonder what ever happened to them. They probably got stored away for safekeeping. Yeah, in the garage. Coach Carlson expects a guy to be an Olympic champ just to get on his old team. Oh, I don't know. I never thought the coach was so tough. He thinks you're just the greatest. Yeah, it looks like a good salad, bud. Oh, thanks. I remember paying the bill for the lumber to make the shelves. They delivered the lumber weeks ago. That's another reason you can't get into the garage. When do you start work for Mr. Ellis? Well, I haven't exactly got the job yet. Barnaby Hawes and I are both up for it. You know, Mike, I also remember that you and Robbie were supposed to put up those shelves. What happened? What shelves? The storage shelves in the garage. Who did make the basketball team? Whenever I had any time to work, Robbie wasn't around. What are you blaming on me now? How is Ellis going to decide between you and Barnaby? He's going to try us both out of the job, see which one works out best. Mike, you and Robbie do the job on Saturday, hmm? At Ellis's? In the garage. I want those shelves put up Saturday. Oh, gee, Dad, it's this Saturday that Barnaby and I are supposed to work at the store. Well, couldn't we hold off on the shelves till next week? Mike, we've held off too long already. Oh, I'd hate to miss out on this, Dad. I mean, you're always telling us okay, if you want okay. extra money. You can split the job. You come home after school tomorrow and put up half the shelves, and Robbie, you put up half on Saturday. Well, that's fine with me. Okay, Robbie? Okay. I'll hunt up the plans after dinner. All right. I'm just tired of having to climb over something every time I drive into that garage and get out of the car. You know, Robbie, maybe you didn't make the basketball team because you try too hard. Did you ever think of that? Yeah, I remember the first time I tried out for basketball, I had the idea that... Who needs basketball? I mean, nobody could be as good as the coach thinks you are, so why break my neck trying? Hi, where you been? Old lady Manders kept me in after school. Oh, I always thought she looked pretty sharp for a teacher. Yeah, well, you are probably so great she didn't have it in for you. Look, I want to show you what I've done here. I can see. Well, anyway, you shouldn't have any trouble finishing it tomorrow. Boy, some swell Saturday. Just stick to Dad's plans and you can't miss. Oh, and be sure and get these wall supports in solid, because if you I'll don't... I'll finish this... the shelf. My half won't be perfect like yours, but I'll get it up. Hey, what's your beef all of a sudden? What beef? I mean about you not doing things as well as me. Not so fast. You're sore at me and I want to know why. I'm not sore at you. Let go. Not till I get an answer. Now look, I'm sick and tired of being needled and not knowing why. Yeah, well, I'm tired of using your old beat up books and I'm tired of wearing the clothes you don't want anymore. I'm sick of hearing how great you are coming off second best because you're such a champ. I'm fed up with being in hot water all the time because you were lucky enough to get yourself born first.
Well, well, look at their sleeping beauty. Let's go practice. Help yourself. Hey, I thought uh, Robbie was going to get an early start this morning on his half of the shelf. Well, I'd have booted him out when I got up, but lately he squares off at me if I even ask him the time of day. Now, don't worry about it, Mike. He'll get over it. And uh, good luck. I mean, uh, I hope you get the job. Oh, I'm not too worried. <laughs> I mean, uh, Barnaby's a brainy guy and all, but uh, let's face it, he has no sales dynamics. Oh. Bob, how about giving me a hand with those shelves? Dad said you'd probably ask. I'm sorry, I got work enough of my own. Come on. Cramp, Be out there out. till dark. Why didn't you get up early like Mike? Oh. oh. <laughs> hey, huh? Hello? Oh, hi, Trish. No, I've been up for a couple hours. Oh, oh. <laughs> no kidding, down at Riverview? Wow. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> hey, will you cut it out? <laughs> no, not you, Trish. Hey, <laughs> hold it a second, wait. Hey, w wait a minute, Trish. Hold on a second. Oh, Trish? Sorry, it's my little kid brother. Yeah, I guess they all are. Um, listen, Trish, that barbecue sounds swell, but I'm not sure if I can make it today. Yeah, well... Excuse my feather duster, but some of us have got work to do around here today. Oh, Trish? Yeah, uh, well, are you gonna be at the park all day? Uh, well, why don't I... Oh, why don't I? Oh, why don't I? Excuse me. Why don't I come over as soon as I can? Yeah, thanks. Call again. Trish? 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 see what this has to do with being a salesman. Well, we'd better check that freight receipt and make sure that's all of the shipment. Ferguson? I'll take care of you, Barnaby. Good morning, sir. Oh, oh I, I just came in to see Charlie. Well, I'm working for Mr. Ellis. What can I do for you? Well, I got all set to go fishing. I looked in my tackle box and, well, I couldn't find... You know, I knew you were a fisherman the moment I saw you. You're really in luck, sir. We just got in a new shipment of reels. Well, all I need right now I is... loaded them myself. Okay. Oh, you've got to see these. Uh, here we are. Look at that little beauty. It'll give you the kind of control that you've always wanted. Well, it looks nice, but I'm not interested today. Hey. Light as air, but... Uh, Guaranteed to keep your feet warm and dry. Now, if you'd care to come over here and sit down, I can have you fitted in a jiffy. Don't need boots. Never wear them. <laughs> Here. 
Here, do yourself a favor and try this I'm rod out. I'm strictly a live bait man. I used to feel the same way myself, but fly fishing isn't the same with a rod like this. Well, look at the control you have. Look at how easy I do this. It's light, it's strong, I'd durable. Be careful last with that, for so long, this will last for a lifetime. Look, Sir. there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Uh, it's okay, Mr. Ellison. Just a little accident, no problem. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, just a little accident. Nothing. I'll have these up in Jiffy. I'm sorry, sir, but it's just such a great run. I wouldn't be surprised. But what I came in for was two bits worth of hooks. Hooks? You know, fish hooks. What size hooks, sir? Number two. Oh, oh, this is neat. Hey, come on, get off of there, will ya? You're getting your fingerprints all over there. Boy, your part looks neat, Robbie. And you left lots of room on here for the station wagon. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on, let's get out of here. You want some milk? Oh, yeah, here's the right. say that I am. How do you like Willie? <laughs> Boy, something must have gone wrong. That is a reasonable assumption. <laughs> well, hope we've got a car left under there. Everything was okay when I left. I can't understand how it happened if you... You know, Robbie, I could have sworn we had just enough of this lumber for the knee braces. How come you had this left over? You did follow the plans, didn't you? Or maybe there was an earthquake on that side of the garage, huh? You should let Mike do the whole thing. Now, wait a minute, Robbie. I give up. Why try? I mean, everything I do, Mike can always do a lot better. Well, just because Mike... I mean, Mike's didn't... better at everything. You all think so. And even if you don't say it, I know what you feel. Mike never goofs. I'm always the one who ends up looking like a dope. Come on, get up. Rob, uh, let me get this straight now. 
Are you trying to tell me that this isn't your fault, but Mike's? Not exactly his fault. But not yours either. The shelf didn't fall because you might have been in a hurry and did a bad job on it, huh? It fell because you're Mike's brother and we expect too much of you, is that it? Seems like all I hear is Mike, Mike, Mike. Is that maybe the reason you didn't make the basketball team? And why you're having trouble in history? You don't understand what I mean. Yes, yes, I think I do, Rob. Yeah, any time you fall on your face, you, uh, you've got to build an excuse. It's never your fault. Sounds like a pretty handy arrangement. I wish I could dig up something like that. Come on, let's get this stuff off here, huh? Grab that in. Oh, what's in there? It's lucky we saved that old mattress so we'd have a few dents to take out. Better get baby buggy off of here. Come on, Rob, come on. Remember when you used these? Yeah, when I had my broken ankle. Mm -hmm. Gee, they sure have gotten a lot shorter. I suppose it might be that you've gotten longer. Anyway, they wouldn't be much good to you now, would they? No, but I sure got around to them then. Remember how I'd go rocketing off to school? And all the tricks I used to play with them? Old Doc Woods, remember him. Robbie Douglas? You'll never stand on your own feet again unless you throw these things. Oh, boy. Yeah, I remember. Looks like somebody scored a direct hit. Would you forget to use nails? Go ahead, rub it in. I did it all wrong. I'm stupid, see? I, of course, a guy as perfect as you wouldn't know what that meant. No, I, you do everything perfect. I mean, everything I do is... <laughs> Mike, are you feeling all right? <laughs> I feel fine. Except I didn't get the job. He hired Barnaby. Oh? Did uh, Mr. Ellis tell you why? Well... First, I wanted to think that maybe Barnaby's dad put the pressure on, but... What's the use of kidding myself? While I was developing my sales dynamics, Barnaby went down to the store after school last week and learned the stock. Hmm. Pretty sneaky, huh? Smart. Today, I showed up looking like something left over from last year's prom. Barnaby was in work clothes. And he worked hard. So he got the job. I'm perfect, all right. I'm a, a perfect failure. Well, quit slugging yourself, Mike. Anybody can make a mistake, but not everybody will admit it. Mike? I'm sorry about the job. Nothing's broken. I don't think it'll take us long to fix it. Thanks, Dad. Oh. Yeah. Well, I guess you fellas can get along without me, huh? <laughs> 